You are listening to Dream Boston, a new series of audio plays powered by the Huntington Theatre Company. Dream Boston offers glimpses of the future, hopeful, full-hearted, and complex, a vision of our city that is somewhere between dream and reality. This play is set at the Harvard Art Museums. The date is January 22nd, 2022. The title of this play is The Moment Before the Lights Went Out on the Rothkos. Hello? <gasps> oh, uh, hello. Do you mind if I stand here? Oh, uh, no. Uh, of course not. Not so socially distanced anymore, are we? No. Uh, no not so much. <laughs> it's good to see the Rothko panels. I'm glad Harvard decided to display them again. It's so meaningful now, especially. We were all sequestered for so long, like they were. Glorious, aren't they? What? Oh, I guess. I saw them back in 2014, when the museum first brought them out of storage. They hadn't been seen in decades. From what I gather, Rothko used a very delicate pigment as a binder that was highly unstable, so the colors deteriorated over time. Plus, they were exposed to harsh natural light where they'd been originally displayed at the old Holyoke Center, and that, unfortunately, accelerated the degradation. But, somehow, through the miracle of technology and research, Conservationists were able to figure out how to use projectors to cast an invisible panel of light and color onto the surface of the damaged paintings and restore them to their original brilliance. They turn the lights off in five minutes. It's quite startling when it happens. The difference, I mean. So what you're looking at right now is something that isn't really quite there. Something on the surface. Like a ghost. Uh-huh. I wonder who first realized that they were damaged. That they had finally faded beyond repair. Had it been a gradual realization? Or sudden? A little both? For me, these paintings feel like a comment on the relentlessness of time. The timeless question of appearance versus reality as well as the ephemeral nature of existence. Oh, I get it, like Todd. Todd? Yeah, Todd, my first husband, yeah. He seemed so dependable and well, normal at first, but that wasn't what he was like at all. I should have known from his hands. His hands? Yeah, he had these hands like moths, waved them around everywhere, fluttering them. That should have been my first clue. Well, he, he comes home from work one day, and he says he wants a divorce. And he's very gentle about it. He sits me down, tells me it's not working out, that it's not me, it's him, and that he's fallen in love with someone else at work. And it turns out that this someone else that he's in love with was a couch. Specifically, the old green couch in the break room at his job. Says it understands him. That it's always there when he needs someone to lean on, to talk to, sit on, whatever. And a week after he moves out, I get a wedding invitation. A photo of him and the couch. Join us, it reads. The couch was all decked out in flowers. But, you know, it was frayed. There was a big curry stain on one of the armrests. It didn't even have a fold-out bed. God, what did that effing couch have that I didn't? But love is love, I guess. Hey, what zodiac sign are you? Wait, don't tell me. I'm really good at this. You're a Scorpio, aren't you? No. Oh. Sagittarius? No. Pluto? Pluto's not a zodiac sign. It's, it's a planet. Oh, that's right. I was so sad when they made him drink hemlock. That was Plato, not Pluto. Well, well... Technically, Pluto isn't a planet either. It's a dwarf. Smart guy. Are you an Aries? No. Gemini? No. Oh, Cancer? No. 
Leo. No. Aquarius? No. Capricorn? No. Libra? No. I thought you said you were good at this. I am. Pisces? No. Scorpio? You already said that. No. Taurus? No. Oh, well, I give up. What are you? I'm a Virgo. Virgo? Yuck. What do you mean, yuck? Oh, nothing. It's just, well, Virgo. I mean, you guys are assholes. I dated a Virgo once. Once. First date, he's late. Comes shuffling in the restaurant, all sheep-faced. He says, sorry, I kept you waiting. I had to file for bankruptcy today, and it took longer than I thought. I said, well, great. I guess dinner's on me, huh? And then he says, I don't know about you, but I can't go too long without a line of Coke. Have you got any Coke? And I'm like, do I have any Coke? What kind of question is that? Of course I have Coke. I have tons of it, but do you think I'm going to just hand it over to you? I mean, we just met. So then he's like, I got to go to the bathroom. And I wait and I wait and I wait and he never comes back. Climbed out the window in the men's room. Fucking Houdini. Oh, by the way, if you ever have to smuggle cocaine in your ass across the Canadian border to pay off a blood debt, make sure you use two condoms instead of one because sometimes the first one can break. Trust me, better safe than sorry. Okay, can I ask you a question? Shoot. Why are you wearing a metallic diaper? Oh, do you like it? Good. It was made for astronauts. People actually wear these in space. Really? You remember Buzz Aldrin, Neil Armstrong, Sandra Bullock? Did you ever wonder how they tinkled and pooped up there? Well, they used one of these. I'm peeing right now while we speak. I bet you couldn't even tell. No, I couldn't. See? I drove from Florida to Chicago in one of these babies. Didn't have to stop once. I was going to murder my boyfriend's wife so we could be together. This is way before Todd, by the way. I had it all planned out. I was going to beat her to death with a sack of oranges, you know, like in the grifters. Only I couldn't find oranges, so I was going to use butternut squash. Then cut up the body, feed it to some nearby alligators, blah, blah, blah. But I am so glad I didn't go through with it because he turned out to be a real prick and it just wasn't worth the potential jail time, you know? By the way, if you ever do go to jail, take my advice. Just find the biggest prisoner in the yard and beat the shit out of her. Because otherwise, you're going to be someone's bitch forever. Thanks for the advice. Sure. So, <laughs> I think I can tell where this is headed. Where what is headed? Oh, come on. I saw you checking me out. I know you want to get all up inside this. I can feel that energy, that animal heat. Uh. So what do you say, handsome? My place? I'm parked around the corner. I have some Slim Jims and a half a bottle of Aperol in my glove compartment. We could make a night of it. Ah. Uh. Or can you even wait that long, you horn dog? We could try the men's room. I need to change my diaper anyway. I am so sticky. Maybe you can help me peel it off. I think you might be mistaken here. I'm married. That's never been a problem for me. Game on. Happily married to a man. I'm gay. I am very gay. Gay? Are you sure? I'm sure. If I wasn't, I am now. Huh. Uh, typical Virgo. You're pretty much all gay. Or British. Well, I have to say, I am disappointed and, frankly, a little shocked because I was really feeling something here. A connection. Those are rare. What's your name? Scott. Those are rare, Scott. Like those boring paintings you're so crazy about. I'm probably not going to come along into your life again, so you're lost. By the way, the lights went off on those mural thingies. Oh. They did. They were just big squares of red, and now they're just big squares of gray. They're actually a bit more than just... I, I don't see what the big deal is at all. 
Then again, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. <gasps> hey, you know who said that? Plato! Mickey Mouse's dog actually said that. Uh. Okay, Scotty. <laughs> Take good care. And frankly, if you love those paintings so much, you should marry them. Seriously, you and Todd can go on double dates. Bye. I'm already married to a human. Okay. Well, I wonder who first realized that they were damaged, that they had finally faded beyond repair. Had it been a gradual realization? Or sudden? A little of both? For me, these paintings feel like a comment on the relentlessness of time, the timeless question of appearance versus reality, as well as the ephemeral nature of existence. Thank you for listening to Dream Boston where a local playwrights imagine locations, landmarks, and their friends in a future Boston when we can meet and connect in our city. The Moment Before the Lights Went Out on the Rothkos is written by John Kuntz, an associate professor of theater at Boston Conservatory at Berkeley and a lecturer in theater, dance, and media at Harvard University. John will never forget seeing the lights go out on the actual Rothkos at the Harvard Art Museums in 2015 with his husband, actor Tommy Dara. The Moment Before the Lights Went Out on the Rothkos is directed by Rebecca Bradshaw, sound designed by Valentine Frank, and line produced by Kaylee Chase. The role of Scott is played by Diego Arseniegas. Ernestine is played by Mariana Basham. To hear more audio plays from Dream Boston, visit HuntingtonTheatre.org. You can also sign up for virtual classes in our Huntington at Home School series and learn more about future productions at the theater. If you enjoy Dream Boston, please subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you found this series. The Huntington Theatre Company encourages you to support your local theater wherever you may be dreaming. To support the Huntington, please go to our website, and thanks for listening.